Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode of Liberating Minds and for today we shall be discussing the concept of Pan-Africanism. What is Pan-Africanism? My name is Maganga, I'm a member of the Revolutionary Socialist League and it's a pleasure to have this discussion with you today. When we look at the concept of Pan-Africanism, what we can define it is simply as a concept which seeks to achieve the unification of the African people. So simply that tendency to seek the unification of the African people can be defined as Pan-Africanism. So what is the history of Pan-Africanism and why the unification of the African people in particular? This tendency or this idea of seeking the unification of the African people is based on the fact that Africans share a common history and as such share a common destiny. At least this is what we understand as a result of the experiences that the African people have undergone. Pan-Africanism developed as a process of resistance. So Africans are coming together, but why are they coming together? They're coming together to resist enslavement and colonialism that they were experiencing, not only within the African continent, but throughout the world as well. So since people of African descent were undergoing these challenges, it made sense for Africans everywhere to seek to come together in order to achieve a resolution of those problems, of those challenges. So since we share common problems and common experiences, it makes sense to say that we have to come together in order to collectively seek to achieve solutions to those problems. When we look at the history of Pan-Africanism, we see that therefore it has its roots in this resistance against enslavement and against colonialism. The first convening of Pan-Africanists took place in the year 1900 in London and it was convened by Henry Sylvester Williams. It was the first Pan-African conference. When we look though at the first official Pan-African Congress, we see that it took place actually in 1919 in Paris. There were other congresses that took place after that in 1921 and 1923 in London, in 1927 in New York. The most famous perhaps is the 1945 Pan-African Congress, which took place in Manchester, England. And this is significant because the outcome of that Congress was that African people everywhere mobilized themselves in the struggle against colonialism. Of course, the struggle had been continuing for a while, for a long time, as long as Africa had been colonized. But specifically, uh, this conference focused on decolonization and meant that the primary goal, the immediate goal of all Pan-Africanists worldwide. So that all efforts of African people, all efforts of Pan-Africanists were geared towards achieving the decolonization of the African continent. And we see uh, the success of that Congress as being actually the attainment of an independent African continent. So we see that the people who attended that, con um, that Congress participated actively in the immediate struggle to achieve independence and many African countries became independent as a result of that push and of that campaign. We see that even after formal independence was granted to many African countries, Pan-African Congresses continue to take place. For example, in Dar es Salaam in 1974, in Kampala in 1994. Of course, the outcome of these uh, are not as significant as the outcome of the 1945 Pan-African Congress. But looking at Pan-Africanism today, and looking at its relevance, looking at its end goal, which of course, is the unification of the African people. How do we define revolutionary Pan-Africanism or genuine Pan-Africanism, which would seek to not only unify, but also liberate the African people? We know that there is Pan-Africanism, which actually is not revolutionary Pan-Africanism in contemporary times, but Pan-Africanism, which simply seeks to achieve unity without actually looking at the root cause of the disunity of the African people. This we refer to as reactionary Pan-Africanism. 
it is reactionary in the sense that it seeks to cooperate with those very forces that were enslaving the African people, that were colonizing the African people, and that continue to dominate the African people and their resources. So in short, uh, this is a Pan-Africanism that seeks to take us back to the very beginning, you know, to the very issues that in fact made Africans want to come together in the first place. Who champions this kind of reactionary Pan-Africanism? It is the ruling elite in Africa today. We know that Africa, in as much as it is formally independent of the colonial powers, it still is under the control of those very uh, colonial powers. We know that African resources, African land, African sovereignty is still not in the hands of the African people and Africa still continues to be colonized by the former colonial masters. So the African elite who serve as accomplices in this situation are the ones who push this reactionary pan-Africanism and it manifests itself in ways such as Africa should unite so that businesses or so that capital moves around the African continent. So what they want really is for their own interests as an exploiter class, as an elite to be expanded. So that if you are um, an elite, if you are a capitalist in Kenya, you'd want your capital to be able to move around the African continent. So you want Africa to be unified, not necessarily because it will achieve liberation for the people, but simply because it will translate into higher profits for you and for the capital that you possess. So that is the class that's behind this reactionary Pan-Africanism. Opposing this is the genuine Pan-Africanism of the people, which we refer to as revolutionary Pan-Africanism. Revolutionary in the sense that it seeks to smash those very roots of the oppression and exploitation of the African people. It seeks to smash that enslavement, that colonization of the African people, which led Africans to become Pan-Africanists in the first place. Put simply, it seeks to complete the process of liberation that began with the ancestors of the African people who were fighting and resisting uh, enslavement and who were fighting and resisting colonization. So it seeks to complete this process of liberation. This is what we refer to as revolutionary Pan-Africanism. And how does it seek to complete this process of liberation? Or what does a liberated Africa look like in the lenses of revolutionary Pan-Africanism? A liberated Africa looks or rather appears as a unified socialist Africa. So we have an African continent which is unified and which is socialist. And by socialist we mean it is under the control of the people themselves. It is the people themselves who determine how the government is run. It is the people themselves who determine how the means of production how the economy is run, how the society basically goes on. So basically it is a democracy of the people, that's what we mean. A unified socialist Africa would mean that the people themselves are in charge of their destiny. So they have sovereignty over their country. They have sovereignty over every decision that they make. Yeah, they are totally, totally independent. They do not work with forces that were colonizing them to continue to exploit the resources or the labor of the African people, rather they have smashed all ties with those former colonial uh, powers. They've smashed all ties with interests that seek only to exploit the people. And they've achieved a situation in which the people themselves are in control of the resources, are in control of the land, and are in control of their destiny. This of course is what is genuine Pan-Africanism. And this of course is what genuinely will achieve liberation for the African people. When you look at various countries in Africa today, we see that this is what needs to be achieved. We look at Kenya, for example, and see how the land that was taken away by the European colonialists still belongs to the European colonialists. So the African people, in as much as they would say they're independent, they really are not independent because they're not in control of their resources. 
when you look at South Africa, still the forces that have been colonizing the country own most of the land. They own most of the resources. The same is true for literally almost all countries in Africa. So revolutionary Pan-Africanism is revolutionary in the sense that it will correct that. It will put the land of the African people back in the hands of the people and it will achieve political and economic liberation for the African people. That is what revolutionary Pan-Africanism is and that is what the African people need in order to live in dignity. Thank you and see you in the next episode. Hizi pingu, zimeni funga, zika nshinda kusonga Shinda kusonga, kusonga mbele Na shindwa kanta, shinda hapa milele Hapa milele Na itachi kombozi, ukombozi, ukombozi Sahi, na itachi kombozi, ukombozi